What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Nintendo Land and we just got a brand new trailer for The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom that finally shows us some actual gameplay and some of what's going on. Still leaving so many questions on the table, we got a lot answered within this short little trailer, but actually it wasn't that short because it shows us lots of combat, lots of new enemy archetypes, and lots of new portions of the map, which yes, we thought we were going to be able to explore for a very long time now. But I'm here to give you guys every little bit of information and details that were in this trailer, including the map, the enemy design, and yes, even our boy Ganondorf as he gave us a nice little speech. Leave no survivors! Starting off, the trailer shows us a very rainy day, and the entire kingdom is just very sad looking, and it's lightning, it's storming everywhere, so yes, we still have storms. This storm looks a little crazier than normal. I don't know if like storms are getting crazier, but yep, yeah, we're still gonna have slick feet climbing things. Get used to it. But we can't see much within this scene besides some malice down on the ground and obviously the malice spewing out of the volcano in the background. But if you look closely, we can see a spiral of that green aura coming out of the ground and near some structures, which I might have a theory what this could be and I'll talk about it a little bit more in detail later on. Next, we move on over to the military camp and it seems to look pretty much the same. It's still in ruins but this time we have some new flying enemies in the air and they almost look like flying Lizalfos and we know from later in the trailer they'll be able to drop off enemies in certain areas and also try to attack Link from above. These are not bats anymore, we got some big flying creepy creatures. Next up, we see Sheikah Towers that are actually glowing beams of light. It's really hard to tell why right now, um, but one reason could be they might be access points in order to reach the areas in the sky, which would make a lot of sense. But we also see the landscape having some type of glowing design in it as well. We see this throughout multiple trailers and even the past trailers, where some pieces of the ground of Hyrule will glow with a symbol, and maybe that's some type of reference to this, some type of island above it, or maybe something below, because we see in this trailer, the the underground is going to be utilized a lot. Now I'm not 100% sure, but it looks like we're looking at the Twin Peak Mountains to the back right, and above it is a giant funnel cloud all the way up to the top of the sky, which might be some type of teleportation or warp that takes us up to the islands, but we actually got to see a lot of the islands from the ground in this trailer, so maybe there's even more islands all the way up that we can't even see and we might have to even load into, which takes us well beyond the limits of Hyrule skies that we already know of. But if you look closely, you can actually see little pieces of floating platforms leading up to this funnel at the top of this mountain as if we can climb up them in order to get through this tunnel. Maybe this is where one of the dungeons lies and maybe there's dungeons back. I know I'm just stretching right now, but it is very weird and you can make out these little pieces of platforms in between the lightning flashes. This does seem to be taking place at least in a similar area. We can see swirling clouds up to the top right and a whole bunch of floating platforms which could be right above the Twin Peaks, which once again might lead us into higher levels in the sky that we can't see from the ground yet. So some of those platforms that we do see in the sky might just be a couple of them that we use to get even higher, which means this game's verticality is going to be quite insane. Now there is one floating platform we see in the background with a huge piece sticking out underneath. This reminds me of the Skyview Temple from The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, where it was actually a piece of Skyloft that would break down and it was right underneath the statue of the goddess, which once again we know is in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. So maybe this piece of land could have rose up in the sky and maybe this is still that same temple that Link gets to revisit and it might even be a playable temple in this game. I'm blowing your minds, I know. It actually even looks like the base of the statue of the goddess and just the statue ripped off somehow when it rose to the sky. There even looks like to be a doorway which might allow you to enter and go down into this dungeon and maybe see remnants of what the dungeon used to look like having a humongous Skyward Sword flashback. That would be beautiful. Imagine if there was actually still enemies from Skyward Sword in there too and we we got to see them return. And there's also a small square platform with a beam of orange light glowing from some device, which I'm still not sure what this could be right now. I have some theories maybe moving on to the future. There's also glowing blue orbs, which signifies that there is Sheikah technology around this area. And it looks like we get to see that same or similar glowing carving on the ground, but this time it's not glowing. Maybe it's because Link is already up in the clouds and maybe that's the way he gets up there by using these glowing platforms. I don't know. Now I could literally go on forever and talk about the different platforms and stuff floating from the sky. I just don't think it's worth it because there's just so many platforms. They could be anything, just little pieces that Link can step on in order to get even higher or maybe significant areas, who knows. But they all float right above the mountain ranges, which might be the way we get up there. We then get to see the first look at what seems to be an underground network of caves that Link is able to traverse through. And we get to see this malice goo all over the place, which we haven't really seen something like this. It's like a deep red blood 
bloody malice that's poured all over the ground, which might even kill Link faster. Maybe it's from Ganondorf, who knows, it definitely looks weird. But we get to see a little camp of enemies here with Lazalfos and also Bacoblins, and they seem to be chipping away and actually mining for materials, which is very interesting. We've never really seen enemies do this. Um, and they seem to be kind of infested with Ganondorf's brand new red malice. But going back and looking at this cave, this doesn't just seem to be some type of underground cave just for Link to go down, beat up a couple enemies, and leave. It almost seems like a separate world. Yeah, I want to get deep and say that this could lead to the dark world, but maybe not. Maybe it's just a separate civilization that's underground, because we do see nature grows here. There's trees, there's moss everywhere, and there's giant mushrooms sprouting from the ground with tons of different orbs floating all around. Along with these spores floating everywhere and the giant trees that we get to see, there's also weird like sap sacks, <laughs> yeah we're calling that a sap sack, sticking out of the root of the tree and there's roots going all over the place. It just looks very nature like to be a cave and I'm wondering if this might be some of the remains after some of these pieces of the land floated up into the sky it left giant craters all over the world that we get to go into and see these areas. But this stuff looks too natural just to be underneath some type of structure that flew up in the sky. This looks like it's been here for many many years and I'm wondering could there be like civilizations in other towns underneath the ground somewhere with other people living there for many, many years? That would be super cool. There's also some little blue glowy flames sticking out of the ground. I don't know what these are. Maybe these relate to some type of ghost enemy like the Poe returning or something, but there's not much evidence as to what else this could be right now. Moving on, it looks like we get to see the Bridge of Hylia, which everything looks the same, and of course the floating castle in the background, and oh my goodness, it's a big fire-breathing three-headed dragon. This is insane. This is very easy to miss if you're just looking at the background, but look at this guy. This no doubt has to be Gleok from the original Legend of Zelda, which was a giant green three-headed dragon. And if you look at his tail, it almost has a green tint to it outside of its red and orange fire-burning heads, which is extremely intimidating. This might be the first enemy that I've seen so far that is more intimidating than the Lynels. Because man, if I'm walking across the bridge and see this thing staring at me on the other end, I'm turning the other way until I'm at least level 100. Also, I can't tell if any of this is new over here. This little area on the side of the cliff looks like it could be new, and also that rock at the top looks like it could be a stone talus up there, but we also get to see some more green swirling aura over there in the background. And we have good old Hatino Village back, my favorite village from the game, and it doesn't look like too many changes are implemented here, but we do have some more green swirly stuff coming out of the ground or some rock area. Once again, we have no clue what this is. But there also seems to be like little twinkles all over the town. I don't know if there's new lights that they put up or new lanterns, but yeah, they're like all gleaming. I, I don't know what that is. Looking into the background, I can't tell if this is lava flow or maybe Din Rao, the dragon flowing through again, and it looks like it could be because it's moving and it looks like it's like red pieces of something attached to something bigger, unless there's a new enemy from Ganondorf that we haven't seen yet that's like a long giant dragon, but it definitely looks like it could be Dinral again. We then have some thunderclouds over this specific area of the mountain only, and it's shooting different bolts of lightning by the Sheikah Tower, which also looks a little bit different here. Uh, but look at the bolts of lightning. This is something that's not all over the entire map and reminds me of the Thundra Plateau, where it's just in this one specific area for some reason. And yep, those Sheikah Towers have been changed as they look a lot different, and maybe those beams of light was actually what changed them, and maybe they work more like elevators now, taking you straight to the top, which allows you to get to the Sky Islands faster. We get to see that the Blood Moon is back, and Link is looking at it through some type of doorway in some broken structure, and in the background you get to see more floating platforms and areas in the sky, with some long piece that may be one of those elevators that takes you straight up there or something. I'm not quite sure, because we really have seen nothing with the sky as much as we want to. With the Blood Moon being back, it doesn't look like it's the same thing as the past game, where it just revived fallen enemies and troops on the battlefield, but this time it looks like it actually makes them stronger as it shoots out pieces of rock and falling debris all over the battlefield, which actually even can detonate like bombs all over the place. Ganondorf is not playing this time around. The castle seems to have dried up malice all over the outside of it, maybe from the previous game, um, but overall looks pretty much the same, just in ruins once again. As all the debris is falling, we get to see more of those green swirly things from the ground, maybe it's a warp point or something to get from place to place faster throughout the world, but the scene of one of the pieces of rock detonating on the ground reveals something kind of horrific. I don't know if this blows up on an already existing enemy to make it stronger, or maybe it's actually forming this enemy as it blows up on the ground, 
but this is very creepy looking. It seems to have claws and tentacles like a guardian and almost pieced together with an already existing creature. And maybe Ganondorf is just forming his own soldiers now with pieces of the world and pieces of his own soldiers formed together. And we can kind of see stuff like this with some of the enemy archetypes. For instance, in this scene, we get to see pieces of the blood moon explode and actually form into bokoblins. And these bokoblins seem to have weapons just kind of formed and sticking out of their heads, such as these spiky swords, which seems to be kind of the plan now for Ganondorf. Dwarf, just to take existing weapons and items and fuse them with his soldiers. In the next scene, we get to see a whole field full of his army soldiers, and yes, there's different weapons attached to their head. One Bokoblin in the background has a double-edged sword or spear tip, and this Lizalfos actually has maybe a boomerang or another sword tip at the edge of its head, which is kind of brutal if you think about it. The poor Moblin in the back gets stuck with some type of giant spiky rock on his head, so I don't know what's going on with that. We get a brand new archetype, and I'm just going to call them Big Moblins for the sake of this video, which are just big pigs. They got spikes all around their head like a crown, and once again, they also have different weapons sticking out of their head, as this one has a little baby sword sticking out, which has got to be painful. So are all the enemies just going to run at length like this? But we also have another new enemy, which seems to be made out of flesh and bones, and to me, this looks the most like a redead, even with the mask and the glowing eyes, and it just has the face of like a beetle with pinchers coming down, but that definitely looks like a redead to me. We then see some molten lava rock start to crumble and fall down, which could be a new Igneo Talus, which might just be bigger, like a huge piece of land instead of just a big rock this time, which would be pretty cool. But this is probably just some rocks falling down as it's like a montage of rocks falling off the cliff and also off the castle. It's just a rock montage. We then get to see the Great Plateau once again, and it looks pretty much exactly the same. And we get to see a glowing symbol up there on a mountain, which once again could symbolize something important for Link. We then see Link running in a field very close to Hyrule Castle with the malice pouring out like crazy. And it doesn't look like there's any way to reach it right now. We might actually be forced to wait a while with this game. But we can see that weird looking funnel cloud that's once again above the Twin Peaks. So it looks like it's going to stay there. And there might be a reason we had to get to the very top this time around. If you remember, Twin Peaks never really had anything at the top besides just things that you could explore in Koroks, but now it might actually have something worthwhile going up there. You can also see a desert valley area where it seems to be a whole bunch of Moldugas swimming through the sand and reaching something. I don't know if this is a cutscene, but I don't know how Link would ever try to defeat all these Moldugas at once, or maybe it's a new type of sand enemy. It's just hard to make out from this distance. You then see Link on some type of Sheikah platform where these guardian tentacles are coming out of the ground and they appear to get ready to grab him for some reason. I'm not really sure what's going on here. One of the guardian tentacles is actually holding some type of coil spring. I don't know what they plan on doing to Link here, but it's pretty funny. He looks pretty shocked. There's also tons of red tarping all along the outside of the room and also Sheikah stickers everywhere, which might resemble the Yiga tribe. So maybe the Yiga are planning to get Link some way and they're using the technology of the guardians in order to do so. This could be a good thing for Link or maybe a bad one. We get to see a field of blue bokoblins running through with their weapons and also their heads with swords on them now. And we get to see a big blue moblin blowing a horn, causing the horde to run towards Link apparently. And also there's an ax sticking out of his head. Once again, I don't know what Ganondorf's plan is with these new enemy designs. I think they're funny. But you get to see them running towards Link and they're probably spawning from the Blood Moon, which causes them to have these weapons in their head apparently in the first place. And the entire sky has this red tint to it the entire time, which might actually lead to believe that maybe the Blood Moon lasts a very long time now. And it's not just a cutscene, it's actually a movement within the entire world. We then see Link running through an underground cave network, and once again, it does have plant life with bushes and leaves everywhere, which once again gives me the vibes of an underground ecosystem down there. But also, this giant Hinox is chasing Link. It's pretty much the same Hinox, this time with like a wooden spiked stake sticking through its head. Once again, thanks to Ganon Dwarf's influence, and also this giant green stone flopping up and down from its neck. Maybe this is a new important item that Link can gain to power up his new arm ability, and we also see those little vials that we've seen in the past trailers beside him, which actually might allow him to use these abilities in the first place. I also 
also think maybe Nintendo wanted to show off some of the better graphics in this game because this scene at night with Link riding the horse through the grass looks really good. Look at the lighting on the grass and look how silky it looks. Now once again this could be one of those areas with the light pattern on the ground which forms some type of symbol um, and I don't know what's actually going on then because Link is running across it and nothing is happening so we're just gonna have to wait a while longer to see exactly what these field symbols do. We get to see those giant flying creatures again and they're carrying Bokoblins this time around and seem to be dropping them near Link in order for them to battle, which is pretty annoying and I can see that being annoying very fast. Um, but also, look at the river. I would say the sunset is making the hue of the river be orange, but we actually get to see in a future scene that that might not be the case. It looks like some of this water or area that once was water is corrupted with some type of gooey nasty mess from Ganondorf and I guess we can now call this liquid malice a malice. Malice Lake? Malice Water? Uh, let's just say Malice Lake for this instance. And maybe Link has to do this for all the bodies of water that's been infected. In the next scene, we get to see Link fighting some moblins in a field, and of course they all have different weaponry on their head, whether it's those giant spiked rocks or the other one in the background having like ram horns sticking out the top. Now this clip keeps catching my attention because it's very, very interesting. Link is now fighting a giant golem that's built out of different blocks, and it looks like it has a green aura that we've seen all over the sky areas in the first place, including Link's brand new arm and the swirling stuff that we see all over the main world. It's all over these blocks and it seems to be controlling it from one central block unit. And I'm wondering if this is like a training ground for Link. It almost looks like a training arena that Link's on in the first place and maybe Link is supposed to fight this creature at the end of a dungeon or maybe at the end of some specific part that he was doing, which just could be a test to see if he can accomplish this. There's also tons of symbols and green dragon sculptures all over the blocks, which once again again could signify that this is from the Zonai tribe. I'm guessing that Link might have to make his way to this specific block in order to deal damage, which he can shoot on the ground with an arrow or maybe throw bombs up there, or once his arm slams and hits the ground, Link can scale it and then climb to the top like Shadow of the Colossus, which would be really cool and a new boss that I actually really love. We then get to see Ganondorf with red malice coming out of his chest or maybe flying into his chest in order to awaken him, and we get to see him seems to either be raising things from the ground or bringing bringing them down underneath the ground. I'm not really sure what's happening here, but he's definitely awakening, and I still want to see hydrated Ganondorf, because we still see this dehydrated version. I'm finally ready to see what this boy looks like for real. In fact, we get to hear him talk at the very beginning of the trailer, and this is what he has to say. Rise, rise, my servants. Sweep over Hyrule. Eliminate this kingdom and her allies. LEAVE NO SURVIVORS! And Ganondorf means business. He sounds terrifying. He's just sitting there like, look, we're not gonna be here like Ganon and just sit in this castle with Zelda all day. Like, we are wiping out Hyrule right now. Let me get this army and let me just run through you guys, which I love. Can we just see what he looks like? Link pour water on him or something? Or maybe Link could cry tears on him. Uh, uh? And then we get to see the skies of Hyrule, which is just beautiful. I mean, I love the light blues and whites in the sky, and it just blends perfectly, and it looks so cool. Look at all these floating islands. There's some that build all the way up that goes even higher. Like I said, there might even be a higher realm where everything's like this golden yellow look compared to what these look like, and there's also a floating cube. Also, as Link sky dies from one of the platforms in the sky, look at the bottoms of them, because they're not just floating for no reason. There's actually maybe a little reason as to why they're up there. There's little pillars and green crystals at the bottom of each of the platforms which probably allows them to float up there which is a nice detail instead of just saying hey these floating rocks are floating because I said they can. Here Link is running by yet another field with a giant symbol there and I still don't know what these are for. I think that's probably my most wanted answered question is what are these symbols for? What do they do? Now I'm not super familiar with every minute detail of Breath of the Wild but this looks new. It's like a giant rock structure with different platforms leading to the top and also it might just be an enemy camp. It looks like there's little horns on it like the skulls we'd find around but this time they got taller which makes a lot of sense instead of Bokoblin sitting in a little tiny skeleton. But it also looks like some of the water in this area might be drained, which maybe some of the water did get drained from whatever Ganondorf did to this kingdom, and maybe that's why we get into some new underground network. 
works. All right, now we get some combat. Link gets these brand new arrows, which are filled with that green light energy, and this is able to actually track down an enemy and blow up on top of them, which is like a homing arrow, which is kind of unfair for the enemies, I'm not gonna lie. Now you can see green energy come out of Link's hand as he fires the arrow, which doesn't seem like that's the arrows doing that's actually tracking down the enemy. In fact, it's Link's hand that helps give it that extra energy in order to fly towards enemies. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe it is the type of arrow specifically made for Link by somebody, and I don't know what type of role his arm plays here, but it's definitely playing some type of role. Behind the trees with arrows is also some weird new stakes and structures sticking out of the ground, and also an enemy camp to the back right. There's also a cave on the side of this mountain, which once again opens up so many possibilities to put caves in all these big areas throughout Breath of the Wild's world. I love this. And if you look up in the sky behind the flying monster, this seems to be that cube thing that we saw earlier. Now this is something we really haven't seen so far, which is new parts of the actual overworld. There's actually a rail here that probably goes all the way throughout the mountain, but an enemy base actually set up a block so that way Link couldn't go through it. But look, Link isn't even using a minecart, instead he's using his own shield to shield surf through these rails, which is pretty cool. And one of the only things I can't understand about this scene is the giant rock sticking out of the mountain. Maybe it contains malice and that's why it has that red line around it, but other than that, I really don't know what this is. Maybe Link can actually move it out of the way in order to get inside of the mountain. We then see Link doing some type of puzzle in the sky and is using his hand in order to turn this dial which actually turns the giant structure beside him, which he probably needs to flip and rotate around in order to make a path to the other islands, which is pretty cool and it looks like Magnesis, but maybe this time Link doesn't only just lift metal objects, instead he can lift and twirl and flip and turn anything. Also, I just wanted to point out the top of Death Mountain is once again shooting out that new Malice, and I just can't not wait to go see if we can get inside there. Like, we better be able to get inside the volcano in this game. We get to see a luminous stone sticking out of a stone talus inside of a cave, which might make it a luminous talus. I, I don't know. They might already exist in Breath of the Wild. I'm not 100% sure on this. Um, but there's also luminous stone all over the cave, which actually reminds us of the very first trailer for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, where Link and Zelda were exploring the caves, which might be beneath Hyrule Castle, which ultimately led them into finding Ganondorf. So this shows that the underground networks are going to be massive. But Link is actually attacking the Talus with a brand new weapon. It's some type of dragon head at the end of a stick. And when Link swings it over his head, it shoots out a blue orb and it blows up on contact as soon as it hits the Talus. So maybe this is some type of cannon weapon that's able to shoot projectiles forward? In the second trailer, we actually got to see Link fighting with some type of dragon shield which was able to breathe fire at a like like hanging from the ceiling. We then see Link come into contact, which appears to be some random woman. I don't think it's Zelda, it appears to be some type of mystical creature, in fact, and maybe someone that actually helps to empower his hand. It could be a new type of great fairy, after all, we see something opening up in the background as this person appears, or it could be the person we keep seeing in all the symbols and ruins on the wall. And this is where we see Link have the ability to pull the plug out of the Malice Lake, which he might be able to just grab anything and just move it out of the way instead of it just all being metal now. But this was probably one of the most exciting parts for me. This is what this game is going to end up being about, is your own creations. Building stuff and doing stuff in order to do what you want to do in this world now. You build this world around you. And look at this. It seems like Link is just driving a car that he found, but if you look closer, it is definitely pieced together. You can see green goo everywhere, kind of welding different pieces of this car together, and it just looks like someone could have built this themselves. And I think that's exactly what happened. I think in this game, there might be a new crafting ability which allows you to actually build your own vehicles. It looks like Link was actually able to place a base and maybe even make a little carriage on the back in order to protect an engine. And the engine is how the vehicle moves. He placed two giant wheels on the back and also two structures in the front, which actually might be like like little flamethrowers or some type of weapon to attack, and you can see his handlebar steering mechanism in the middle, which once again just feels like that Link was able to build all of this, and I have more evidence why I say this. In the next scene, we can see Link floating in the air with like a hot air balloon, and you can see that green goop is all wrapped around as if Link was able to make this structure himself, like he took a platform, took the goop, and tied it in order to combine it with some type of floating balloon mechanism in order to make his own hot air balloon to float in the 
air. So I wouldn't be surprised if the green engine was in the middle and that's all Link needs in order to power these devices. He can use any elements and different structures that he wants and finds on his journey in order to build these things. He just needs the engine. We then get another scene of Link flying this air contraption with this same handlebar. But this time it has like a metal gate for the platform and four giant fans that are welded together with that same goo in order to help him fly it. So seriously, maybe you're able to make your own contraptions and try them out and see how they work. Breath of the Wild was all about the engines as well. The things you could do with the physics engine and how you can move things around in order to make funny plays. This time, it looks like they're allowing us to create how we get around this world. This time, they're not just going to give us a plane or a boat or a car. They're like, you know what? You make it. This actually kind of reminds me of the game Bad Piggies where you could create your own little contraption and you just had to make it to the end of the level. I love this and I really do hope it's as open-ended as I'm thinking it could be where people can create the most craziest designs and we can just have all types of funny videos online of people creating crazy contraptions. I really, really, really hope it doesn't have a huge boundary of things you can't do. I just want to be able to tie a whole bunch of stupid stuff together and see if it can float. Now I'm really not sure how this ties in to this floating bird thing that we've seen before in the past trailers um, because it doesn't have handlebars and it doesn't look like it was made by Link. Maybe this is just a thing that you get in order to fly around the sky, which I don't understand how that would be if you can build things. Maybe they decided to go back and change it. I don't know. I really don't know where this fits into this puzzle, but it looks like you'll be able to create things in this game which is awesome. But taking our focus away from the actual devices, we get to see Death Mountain and a whole bunch of floating structures coming from the mountain itself, which is pretty cool. Nothing else there. You can see how high Link is in this scene, and it just keeps going higher. If you look at the background, there's islands that keep going up miles higher, which is so cool. There's also these weird, long, skinny towers that reach up into the sky, which also might be a reason for how Link gets up here. I don't know what these are, like strings or something, or chains that dangle from the islands, but it's pretty cool. I just love how high you can get in this game. The more I say how high you can get in this game, it just sounds like it's going to be rated M. I gotta relax. We then can see Link riding a horse in a field at the very end here with some malice in the fields, which actually sprout more tentacles this time around, and also some huts and tents. It looks like where some people maybe set up camp in the middle of this field. And there's also a green falling stone from the sky, which with all those islands in the sky, there's definitely going to be debris falling down all the time. But even with all the islands in the sky there's probably still going to be tons of rubble like we can see in this scene on the ground already that we might be able to explore that fell from the sky. At the end of the trailer we see Link's sword corrupted in malice. As we know it eventually breaks apart and starts like just turning into rust um, and he actually has to probably revive it somehow. But we see all of this malice spewing out of Ganondorf's dead body corpse and it's flying out in order to hit Link in Zelda and Link dives off in order to grab Zelda before she falls down in the pit. But Zelda says something very interesting here. Take a listen. Please, lend him your power. Now Zelda talks about Ganondorf a lot in this trailer, saying that Link won't be able to stop him alone, and also tells Link to lend him your power, which I don't know why Link would want to lend Ganondorf his power, but I actually think this might be a separate scene of Zelda talking to somebody else, or maybe even praying to the goddess, telling her to lend Link their power, but something about this just feels like it was literally a cliffhanger. Literally, it ended right before we saw something else about this game. I really do think that Zelda is going to have some type of separate role in this game. They show her at the very end of the trailer reaching out for Link and falling down, and we've seen it at least three different times. Where is Zelda falling? And if Link is actually able to go throughout these tombs and find different things underneath Hyrule, such as caves and cave networks, maybe there's some other way that Zelda is still alive down there. I will still not put it past Nintendo that Zelda could be a playable character or have some very big role in this game that they're still not showing us. It also looked like where Link got hit by that malice and the sword, it corrupted his entire arm, which causes him to have to get that brand new green arm. But I have a crazy theory that gets even deeper with Zelda. Maybe Zelda actually isn't playable, but instead, she dies here. Yeah, what if at the very beginning of the game, Zelda actually dies and goes into spirit form and helps Link that way very similar to Spirit Tracks? Maybe that's who we see that's glowing so magically, and maybe that's actually Zelda when she's perished, and she's already dead, but it's up to Link to save the rest of Hyrule. That would be very sad, but also a very unique plot twist that I didn't see coming. I mean, clearly I saw it coming because I just said it, but it still would be a blind side of a lifetime to see that Zelda actually died in a mainline game. Now, there is a 
a couple of final things that I want to talk about. For instance, the official website states, Explore the vast land and skies of Hyrule. An epic adventure across the land and skies of Hyrule awaits in the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom for the Nintendo Switch system. The venture is yours to create in a world filled by your imagination. That's the line that I think is so interesting because it actually talks about you creating your own adventure, going your own path. And I think this is also hinting at the whole crafting part of making your own land vehicle, your flying vehicle, maybe even your water vehicle, which is so awesome. And Nintendo did confirm that you can get different types of cloth for your glider, which is super cool. You can even get one themed after Majora's Mask. And I'm guessing that you'll probably be able to decorate and design your own in this game as well, but these are specifically tied to Amiibo. But that was absolutely everything that I could find within this trailer. This turned out to be a 30 minute video, so I'm not gonna waste any more time. Thank you for tuning in. If you found anything else, make sure that you comment it down below. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe to stay up to date on all things The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, and Zelda in general. General, and I will see you all on the next one. See you guys.